Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hey Bucko Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over one heck of a knife. I'll tell you what, this is my custom Buck 119. Show it off of the camera a little bit. Today we're going to dive in and uh, discuss what makes this a little bit different than the normal Buck 119. I'll go over some of the specs and if it's right for you. Let's get after it. <laughs> So like I said, this is the Buck 119. Now this is a custom job that was made for me for a Christmas gift last year. I just haven't shown it off on the channel yet, but I'll, I'll go over why it's a little bit different than normal one. Uh, the original Buck 119, the first one, the founder of Buck Knives, made it out of a file over a hundred years ago. So definitely a long storied legacy with this knife blade. Uh, as you can see here, we're gonna go over some of the specs. Standard Buck 119 blade. We do have elk handle. So the there's elk antler with walnut inlays there. You have brass with micarta inlays here on the brass. Uh, can bolster on the end, as long as with the finger guard. Really cool boss heat treat. I mean, just a sexy, sexy knife. And you do ha I do have a custom leather holster that Buck made for me. Uh, this is a left-handed model because unfortunately I am wrong-handed. Let's get into the specs real quick and then we will do the test. So if you're watching today's video, the best way to support what we do here at the channel is to subscribe. It's free and it takes about four seconds. There's a 96.2% chance that you have not subscribed. So please go ahead and do that for me and help us reach our goal of 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also, YouTube is a hunger growing boy. It loves comments and likes. It loves the interaction, promotes this channel in the algorithms. So be sure to feed the YouTube algorithm. Like I said, this is the Buck 119. We're gonna go over the specs real quick and get into the review. It has an overall six inch blade length, 420 high carbon steel with that boss heat treat that uh, Buck has been doing for, gosh, so many years now. And they really know how to do the do the best with that 420 high carbon. It has a partial or rat tail tang, so obviously no full tang. So I wouldn't be beating up on this knife too much like you would say a Joker or a Becker BK6. So keep that in mind. Obviously this is a custom job, so I'm probably gonna be a little bit more gentle with it. Overall length is just at 10 and a half inches. You do have the clip point blade that Buck is known and loved for. Hollow grind, very good there, no complaints. Now the standard model of this has a phenolic handle, excuse me bumping the camera, but this particular model has an elk antler handle with inlays of walnut and then the brass bolster on the end has micarta inlays as long as the the finger guard too so very very nice knife now it's 7.5 ounces i believe this one is a little bit heavier due to the elk antler handle usa made that's one thing i love about bucks they're all 100 percent made in the u.s you can definitely support a good united states company with that uh, genuine leather sheath that's something I've always loved about Buck. They do, I think they do make cheaper nylon sheaths on some of their knives. I'm not sure which models, but this one, I did have to pay a little bit more to get a left-handed sheath. This is a brown leather instead of the standard black. The blade thickness is at 0.175 inches. So you can see that it kind of tapers down there into that swedge. Very, very good looking knife. It does have a 90 degree spine, so you can use your ferro rod or your fire starter on there. And it is rock weld between 57 and 59, so no complaints there, especially with that hollow grind and the 420 high carbon, you can really get one heck of an edge on there. I mean, just from the factory, I haven't sharpened this since, and I've used it a little bit, and man, still razor sharp. All right, into the review. First test, as always, we're just gonna do some basic cordage cutting. I have some 550 paracord here, and I, I there's no issues with this. I can almost guarantee you. Boom, like butter. Let's see if we can make a another loop and now we have two like I'm barely putting any pressure it's literally like butter little wee hitting a gritty all right so on. uh another favorite cordage of mine to test these blades with is hemp rope besides like uh tarred bank line for shelter building obviously I probably wouldn't use something as thick as this but hemp rope is pretty good it's you know it stands up to the elements pretty well so really no complaints with that now this is some thicker stock on this hemp rope, so we're gonna see if the buck can get her done, choke up on that blade. So I'm on the, the tang there. Oh man, definitely some more pressure needed than some of the thinner stuff I've used in the past for these videos, but honestly, no complaints. Let's see if we can do that one more time. Not noticing any hot spots yet. Something that is really cool to mention, just cut through that piece really nice. On this particular model with this elk antler, you do have these finger engraves here. 
You can set your fingers very, very comfortable. And I have some pretty big hands. I wear large size gloves and I have plenty of real estate, whether I want to choke up on, on it like this, like that. I mean, no complaints. All right, let's move on. I always like to put my knives through the cardboard test. I don't know why. I mean, I probably wouldn't be carrying this around the home, cutting up boxes, but you never know. God forbid you're, I mean, with Amazon and the drones and everything, you'll be out camping like, oh, I want some Doritos nacho cheese and I got this delivered to my campsite. So you might have to process some cardboard. Definitely some thicker stock. It just hit me in the face. Oh, wow. Oh, it's... So, let me cut through. Again, not much pressure needed. Just very slicey. I mean, definitely putting it at a forward angle. Uh, but yeah, let's see if I can pierce this. I mean, very, very little pressure needed. I mean, that clip point is super, super sharp. Great, now I'm making a mess. I'm going to have to clean that up. Whoop, okay. And again, no complaints there. Let's move on to our next test. Kind of a muggy day out here in Southern California. All right, we're going to make a spear point with the buck. Not noticing any issues yet. I mean, this is like some California birch, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not birch. It's something. It's pretty hardwood. So it's just simulating, say, you're camping, you need a tent stake, or I don't know, fixing something to fend yourself from a wild animal. Unlikely, but, you know, one can dream. Definitely with that thicker stock, I'm not getting like as slicey, you know, as much of a finesse style uh, cut as I would with say a Mora or a Brisa, but nonetheless, it's doing the job just fine. I just think this type of knife is better for overall utility. I mean, it's a good, it was designed as a hunting knife. It is a little bit large by today's standards, but you know, definitely nothing to complain about. I'd rather have the this and you know, if I'm going out uh, camping, Combine that with my hatchet, maybe a saw. All right, as you can see, we got that. Try some basic chopping. It's kind of a rough ground here, so see if I can get an angle on this for you guys. I am noticing if I just rest my thumb up against that brass, it's a little bit of a hot spot, but not too bad. Definitely no uh, lanyard hole in there, but just you know using. Using your pinky like this and flicking it with your wrist, no issues. So, boom, like that. No issues there. Can definitely chop minor stuff. All right, moving on. So I'm gonna go over basic price real quick. So the base model of this goes for around $75 on Buck's website. Obviously with how uh, chaotic everything is right now with the supply chain and inflation, that could change tomorrow. Or it could you know, go down, go up, who knows? So, a knife like this, this is a, a very nice custom knife. Uh, this caught, this ran me about $300. Now, obviously, for that price, there are way better dedicated survival bushcraft knives than this. But personally, I wanted something like this as a, you know, not only like a, essentially like something I can pass down to my kids and something I can, uh, a knife that maybe even if I don't use it so much, it looks great on the shelf. It's just a very, very good looking knife. And when I think of like an American frontiersman, or something like that. I think of a knife like this, like a, a buoy style knife with the, the bone handle and the brass. I mean, just a good looking knife. Overall fit and finish, I have no complaints. Unfortunately, you know, I've got acid sweat. It has started to tarnish the brass uh, here and here. But, um, but you know, there's nothing to complain about. A normal wear and tear is expected on a knife. Uh, just feeling that edge after doing some of that chopping and some of those other tests, not even a single ding. Now, 420 high carbon, you are going to have to uh, watch the edge and sharpen it a lot more. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast, uh, but you can get a lot finer edge and do a lot finer work. And then and it's a lot easier to work with, too, than, say, something like an S30V, S35VN, which those are excellent steels. But I did have the option to put S30V on this. I decided not to uh, just because I like this for general utility. I don't want something that's so nice that I'm afraid to take it out camping or hiking like I'm doing today here in Southern California. But I just think it's a great knife. Now, does it stand, is it obsolete? Is it, does it stand, you know, peer to peer with some of the other knives in this uh, price range? Maybe not, you know, I do think this is better than no knife at all, but there are probably uh, better dedicated woodscraft and bushcraft knives out there. Overall though, I'm very impressed. I mean, just look at that thing, an amazing knife. 
I think if you're going to have one knife, like an heirloom, a family heirloom, this is really just what I kind of wanted to achieve with that. Like having something like a very, very nice, maybe almost an ornamental knife. So um, definitely very good. I think, you know, I love the idea of it being made in America. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. I mean, Buck has a very storied legacy and they have a great warranty program. So God forbid I'm using this in normal use and I were to chip the blade or the blade were to uh, break off the tang come loose. I can send it back to Buck and they'll repair it or replace it. Uh, I, essentially no questions asked. I mean, obviously check their website if you're going to pick one of these up. But uh, yeah, that's the Buck 119. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Is this something that you guys would want to carry? Uh, so that's the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Like I said, uh, like, share, comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, like I mentioned earlier. And please have a fantastic day.